Week 7 of PFR scoreboard on Lakeshore Public Television. Some scares tonight for some of the favorite teams and the wet, rainy weather wreaks havoc uh, on the long snappers and the offenses tonight. Boy, they really did. I'll tell you, if there are some teams that rose to the top, boy, they uh, played well enough and uh, started putting the conference races in kind of perspective. Yes, but some conference titles still to be decided still, oh yeah. with two weeks oh yeah. to go. All that coming up next on PFR Scoreboard. Pinnacle Hospital is a collaboration between physicians and medical practitioners providing care in a private, personal setting. Pinnacle Hospital offers both inpatient and outpatient care, including laboratory and imaging services. Pinnacle Hospital in Crown Point. Who is the dark afraid of? His name is Tim. When you report a power outage, Tim and linemen like him respond to the call. Text OUT to 444-111 to report an outage. With your cell phone, when the power's out, power is still in your hands. A flex equity line from Tech Credit Union gives you convenient access to cash whenever you need it. This home equity loan features a low introductory rate and no closing costs. Tech Credit Union is an equal housing lender and is federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Learn more at techcu.org or call Tech Credit Union at 800-276-TECH. Programming on Lakeshore Public Television is provided by Strack and Van Til Food Market. Custom decorated cakes, breads, and baked goods right from the oven. Domestic meats and artisan cheeses in every store. Seven days a week, fresh is more than just a word. Strack and Van Til, built around you. Board. Let's get rolling to scores and highlights in Northwest Indiana. And one of the big games of the night was in the Doomlin out at Portage, Michigan City, coming off their big win, uh, their last couple of victories after that tough loss to Valpo, uh, looking to keep the momentum going. Hey, they're putting it together. Tonight they had limited Portage to seven points and put some points on the board for themselves. They did, and they got Kane Vasey over a thousand yards already on the season. He had another huge night. Let's go to the highlights of City and Portage. And bad weather, Wayne, bad all weather. across Northwest Indiana. Rain wreaking havoc. And uh, it had a, it had a big was a big factor in a lot of these football games tonight. Yep, like just like that. A lot of fumbles, the ball was slick. Uh, teams put it on the turf. There's Maceo going into the uh, end zone for the touchdown. Uh, Michigan City's defense really has been quite the story. Boy, they really have. I mean, so is this I guy. Mean, this guy here, <laughs> Kane VC, has really been. Runs a story. over folks, very physical, dominating back. Michigan City got a kickoff return on the opening kickoff for touchdown from Deshaun McGill from 88 yards. And uh, then. They just rolled behind their big stud running back. Well, Ball State really got a uh, player in uh, this game, DC. Well, no, it's Marquise Hurt who committed to Ball State. Uh, He's been banged up. You're yeah. Right. You're right. Kane VC still on the open market there. <laughs> but obviously, folks, folks are, are aware of him. Yeah, their defense from uh, early in the season has really stepped up. Even when they were beaten by Valpo, it was kind of the, the turnovers of the offense that right. got them in bad That's situations. Right. Uh, big one next week. Laporte and Michigan City slicers undefeated. Portage at Valpo, another big rivalry game. That'll be a big game for Valpo. Valpo just a game behind Michigan City in the dueling still. 35-14 for City tonight. Elsewhere in the dueling conference, a big night 
in Maryville at yes. Emory Stadium honoring the 1976 state champ Maryville Pirate football team. In fact, one of our radio correspondents, uh, Tim, Hogan, Tim Hogan, was there tonight. That's right. Uh, with his former teammates. That's right, because he be, was on that team. That'd be You're a big right. thrill for those guys to see each other again. Oh, yeah. And, uh, Talk about the glory days <laughs> of I'm winning sure he, a state title. I'm sure he wasn't really happy with uh, Valpo uh, tonight, though. Uh, the yeah. uh, Vikings <laughs> yeah. kind of spoiled that well, celebration. Pirates uh, had some injuries yeah, they did. tonight. And uh, obviously, bad weather, new quarterback. That's not a, a good formula for success. Let's go to the highlights. Valpo and Merrillville from Demery Stadium. Great job by uh, Janice Pleasa and company honoring those guys 40 yeah. years ago. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Seems like only yesterday, Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for me. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> Cam Wright started, but then got banged up, Wayne, in the first half. Yes. So they had to go to a new quarterback. He, had, he was picked off twice, twice. early. And then the Valpo's defense has really, play, all season long, has played just outstanding football. Very opportunistic. They came up big late in the game as well. They got a big uh, fumble recovery from uh, Bobby Lee. Once Merrillville was trying to go to the down for the winning score. But Mr. LeFew has also been outstanding for their offense. Yeah, and this uh, Jay, uh, Zaki boy, he is outstanding. One of the leading receivers in the area, and uh, the few, you know, is number two, I believe, in the area in passing. Oh, here's a nice escapability for the Maribel's quarterback. There's some nice blocking. What a hole there! You know, Maribel's defense bounced back a yep. little for some adversity. Yep, they did. Uh, they didn't play a bad game tonight. Uh, obviously, they couldn't overcome the injuries. I don't know if Kirkland played. Or if he did, he, he didn't did. play that much, Wayne. Yeah. Uh, I thought I saw a note where he, he was not in the game, so that's not, you know, your two best possibly offensive players. Um, not not in there. That's not good. And Irvin Pondexter, uh, their running, Maryville's running back, really didn't get much um, uh, yardage tonight. Valpo was able to really key on him. Yeah, I think, well, without Kirkland and right. without Wright, right. I mean, I think he was the guy that they were going to key on. Nice Beautiful pass throw by there. Few. Beautiful. Uh, I know Griffin Jelinski, Griffin Jelinski for Valpo had a 21-yard TD catch. And Valpo holds on. Maribel fumbled late. Uh, again, we talked about the wet ball because they had a chance to go down the, the field and win the game. Uh, Valpo holds on. Still a game back at LaPorte and the Doolin. Host Portage next week with LC at Merrillville. Yeah, right. All right, Hanover back at it tonight, looking to stay undefeated, looking to stay in first place in their conference as well. And it looked like both Hanover and Whiting tonight, early on, were trying to shake the cobwebs of that big game last week. Yeah, they really were. This is a big game for Hanover. Uh, they hadn't beaten Wheeler in a while, and you know, Hanover won last week against Whiting. Would they, you know, have a letdown? Would they come back strong? And boy, they did. In the second half, they came yeah. back strong. Both Whiting and um, Hanover really exerted themselves yes, tonight. They did. In the second half, after what could be looked at maybe as a subpar first half, right. they both played pretty well in the second half. Let's check out some of the action. Wheeler at Hanover. Bearcat offense got back on track a little bit tonight. Had, I think, over about 180 yards of total offense. Got some points on the board. That was big for them, Wayne. They had been struggling. Yeah, that really was. And uh, Hanover's defense in the second half, like we said, really responded. Hanover's Dustin defense. Dustin Lindley had a nice game. 181 tonight. yards, three TDs. Bon Scott Young. Boy, that was a nice On the tackle. Right their play before, there's Wheeler going in for the touchdown. Of course, Hanover with the shutout last week defensively. Nice tackle for loss from uh, the Bearcats. And there's Bearcats swarming on defense. Well, you know, their uh, defense 
has not played bad. They have just needed to score some more points. Here's DeLong with a nice run. Three-headed monster on offense. Another nice turn to corner there for Hanover. With Bearcat defense dig it in. Well, this, was, this is why it was not easy early on. You see some good blocking to tackling. There's from a nice hole. Offensive line doing a nice job of opening up something. Look at him, look at him, fight for that. Nice run. Yeah, that's some good effort. Jeez, he's not oh, going down. No, into the end zone <laughs> for a touchdown. But it was Wheeler losing to Hanover tonight. The Wildcats coming back 32 to 14. Uh, Hanover at South Central. Big, another trap game for them. Yeah. A week nine matchup, which could be for the conference title hey. against North Newton. You know, this uh, Hanover Central, uh, South Central game is, you call it a trap game. It could be, but really, South Central's played well enough that it would not be a shock if they were to upset Hanover Central. Uh, I agree. Uh, I think Hanover's going to be somewhat of a decisive favorite, although. I would agree that with although that. Although South Central played really well against North yes, Newton they tonight. Did. Yeah, they lost by one, one point. point. One point. All righty, one more game, the big rivalry game between Lake Station and River. Let's go to the highlights. The Ingots looking to take out their arch rival. And they were outstanding tonight. They really were. Jeez. Oh, that one looks like it slipped out of the yeah, quarterback's yeah. hand. Jordan Powers on the pick for River. Here this, comes River, Terrell Stottlemyre. This is a big, big rivalry. And uh, I really thought that this was going to be a very, very close game. Great tackle, Luis Martinez right there. With an outstanding tackle for Lake Station. But River has scored points all year long. Jeremiah tonight, Walker. Just exploded. Yeah, Jeremiah Walker with a nice run there. Here they come again, Terrell Stottlemyre. Running over uh, an eagle there. <laughs> Got a, I, love, I love this, I love this offense. I, I, the name of it is the one that Coach Zimmer used to run at Calumet. Coming around the end, Terrell Stottlemyre for the touchdown. Ruled the touchdown even though it looked like he might have fumbled. But River Forest defense is uh, the story tonight there. Stottlemyre on defense. Yeah, and Lake, Central, or Lake Station just had a lot of trouble moving the ball tonight. Turned it over there. Yeah. Josiah Zambrano is tackled uh, by Dylan Stiles there. Boy, they're swarming on that one. Keying on Luis Martinez, it looks like, and they have found the ball carrier. Here's Chandler Guess right up the middle, up the middle. into the end zone for the touchdown for the Ingots. And then another Terrell Stottlemyre touchdown run off the misdirection. And they are excited. In New Chicago. Yes. What is it? What do you think? Uh, three miles between schools? Yep, about three miles. <laughs> I think it's about right. Two, three miles between this schools. This is a big game for both of them. Depending boy. which street you jog. That's right. <laughs> this is an Andre and Maryville type of yeah. run. Even better. Big, big shutout victory tonight for River Forest. 33 to nothing. That'll make their season. Uh, North Newton at Lake Station next week. River at Calumet. Calumet played solid tonight against Whiting for the first half. First half? Yeah. Right. All right, how about some scores from across Northwest Indiana for week seven of the high school football season, Wayne? Let's go to the scoreboard, see the rest of the ball games that we're checking out the scores in tonight ahead of our game of the night. LC. Rebounded. Their defense rebounded. A very defense solid really. game. Tonight. That's right. Shut out Chesterton and the LC scores 38 points. That's amazing. That's great. Laporte stays undefeated. The Slicers got a kickoff from Brett Schodel. Looks like 92-yard kickoff return. Another, another uh, unknown player of the week, Wayne. <laughs> That's right. Brett Schodel <laughs> with a kickoff return touchdown. 
And the Andrean defense made a statement tonight. Big job. Andrean's really been coming on lately. These last three games, boy, they they've been scoring really 50 scored points, points, but tonight they showed they could stop people defensively. Right. Elsewhere on the board, Lowell with a 33-6 one over Morton. Big one win over or Morton there, and uh, and Griffith with a nice win, you know, you tonight over tonight. Highland. Mr. Walker was running pretty good, huh? Yes, he definitely over 100 yards tonight for him. And Gavin, you know, put it on Clark. Uh, Hurd really uh, had an excellent game. I think he had three touchdowns tonight. Yeah, but going back to Griffith, uh, Gaddafi, Coleman, and Winston hooking up again for a touchdown. In the first quarter to open the scoring up. Whiting, big second half, 33-6 to over Calumet. Wayne Bishop Knoll took a second half lead. Yes. 14 to 13. You were sweating that one out, I know. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Knoll hasn't won a game since 2014. Uh, they had a second half lead tonight. Yes, the Boone did. Grove stormed back to win 26 Six to, to 14. 14. And there's that North Newton score. Great defense yep. for both teams. Both teams played very, very hard and very, very well. Uh, Newton. Uh, just squeaks out with a one-point win here. Uh, Coach Jeff Bean's team uh, really having a great year. Great year. They are 5-0 and in conference play on a collision course with Hanover Central oh, in yeah, the South yeah. Division uh, of, the, of the conference. Your Jays. Your one Jays. Big over, got back <laughs> one on big over board. Triton. Yep. Yes, they and did. Pioneer. Um, Pioneer big handed it to Knox tonight, yes, which we thought did. Pioneer is an outstanding team. Yes. Uh, no doubt about it. New Prairie lost tonight to Mishawaka Marion in a very close game. Oh, wow. Just their second loss of the season. Another one that was to Laporte in the opener. When we come back, it'll be the game of the night, and it was a close one. It went down to the fourth quarter late. It's coming up next on PFR Scoreboard. information on everything prep football, visit us on Facebook or on Twitter at PFR Sports. Yeah. Game of the night out at Munster, Hobart and Munster, and it was a close, close defensive football game. We right. talked about all the points we thought we'd have, right. but with the bad weather, some turnovers, um, it was a defensive struggle tonight. You know, Danny Stanley had a very good game for Munster, but uh, Hobart. You know, and, and judging by all the reports, Wayne, uh, Hobart used Nick Ray almost yes. exclusively on defense for three quarters. Right. But boy, he came in on boy, offense in the fourth he quarter. To, yes, <laughs> he did. <laughs> and he, he was saved fresh. Him. He was fresh. He was That's fresh, right. and that might have That's been one right. of the keys of the game. That's right. Let's go to the highlights Munster and Hobart. Uh, out at Munster High, and Wayne, it was another good performance by Munster. Andrew Jumanville uh, did an excellent job, and uh, Danny Stanley. This was There's very a nice close. Early. There. That's Stanley. Seven nothing, then seven seven. Boy, he nice hesitation move. Look at that. Going to go gonna all the way. Him. For Al Brandon James will catch him. Well, actually, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven will run him down if anybody's going to run him down. Nice There's pitch. Let's see if they gave him. He did I think they did. No, I don't no. think they did. He did score on a, on a short touchdown run. It might have been later in this game, though. Uh, here's a deflection. That came back to uh, the quarterback. Munster defense did a good job tonight. Here it says, is this number seven? Yep, getting outside. That's him right there. He's going to go the distance. And a big run. Wayne, Munster took the lead in this game. 
And they kind of took uh, number 18 there, Jalen Scott, kind of out of the game. It was more of a running game. Well, with the, the weather conditions, I can understand that. Yeah, he's been a marked man. He and uh, Mr. Bazaki. Yeah. People have been rolling some coverage their way. The Munster Mustangs took the lead. Hobart missed the extra point. Munster had a one-point lead late and a fumble deep in their own territory. That was a big one. Big fumble. Get the fumble, go in for the win. Munster had a chance on the closing drive again. Got down there, but was stopped on fourth and short. Right, right. Uh, Credit to the Hobart defense, yeah. boy. And Nick Ray came in big yes. on offense in the fourth quarter. Had some key runs, a uh, one to uh, really kill the clock uh, after uh, right. uh, after Hobart got the football back. So a big, big victory for Hobart. They stay, they keep pace for the conference title there. And uh, we'll see down the line. They've still got uh, uh, some big games left. So does Andrean. So who will win uh, the Northwest Crossroads? That's uh, going to be big. Gonna be, that's going to be big. You're right. All right. Next week, don't forget, we'll be back on week eight of the high school football season. Boys high school football tournament draw coming up on Sunday on the Internet. You can keep up to date, see where your favorite high school team uh, who they'll draw a big nervous time for coaches. Oh, on Sunday big, week. big nervous time. You're right. Especially if you've got a power in your sectional, like a Mishawaka Marion. Yes. Or like a Penn. Yes. Uh, you know, that makes it very difficult when you look at who you're going to play in the opener. Yep. Char charting your path. Yep. Uh, and you got some balanced uh, sectionals, too. That, yeah, you do. Uh, team, any team could step up and win there. And will you have your home field? That's going to be another big yep. factor. Uh, at what point will you have your home field? All right, time for some rapid fire scores. One more time on PFR scoreboard. Let's hit the scoreboard. 38 0 LC. They get back on track on offense and defense, Wayne. Right, and Michigan City is just pounding people. An excellent job on by Michigan City there. Tonight. And they are still in the hunt. They control oh, yes. their destiny. Oh, yes. With a big matchup against Laporte next week. At home. Yeah. They are home, Michigan City. Valpo wasn't pretty, wasn't great, but a great win over yes. Merrillville. Yes. Anytime you went on the road against Merrillville, Valpo with a nice victory tonight, their defense and offense getting it done. Laporte, impressive again, Wayne. Boy, they just put point, points up. It, and it's different people every, it is. every week. It's I mean, just not one right. person. It, is, it was I, the juice last week. Yeah. You know. Brendan Long again. Uh, Nolan Lorenz, I think, had a 54-47-yard right. TD run tonight. Yep, that's so their quarterback. He might have ran over for over 100 yards uh, for their quarterback. So, wow. uh, hey, do, well, you know, we didn't get any Teeley Ryan updates for no, him. He Grant did. Grant. No, he, he did. Got, he might have got bottled up a little bit tonight. Griffith, nice win over uh, Highland. Um, the, one game, the one game we didn't get was East Chicago and Indianapolis yes, Northwest. that's right. That's right. I don't know what uh, that one was going late. No one had that score anywhere. Gavitt, big over Clark to get back on the winning track. Whiting does as well. Calumet hung with them early. Whiting opens it up late with a nice win over the Warriors. Little River bit, Forest. A little bit of surprise wow. just by the difference there. Yeah, I, I've had this as a maybe three point game. Yeah. Uh, either one way or the other. So did yeah. Sagarin. Yes. <laughs> okay. He, you both to, were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to quit stealing my stuff. The uh, boom. Just a coincidence, I'm yes. sure. <laughs> and over Central and Judson over Triton today. The Jays with the victory over Triton. All right, Hanover and North Newton on a collision course for a couple weeks. Pioneer is a strong, strong, strong team. Another big then, game tonight was... Uh, 1A Lafayette Central Catholic defeated 3A West Lafayette. Oh, really? Down in the in the Lafayette area. So, uh, how was Lafayette Central Catholic still 1A? I have okay. no <laughs> idea. Haven't they won it like seven times? They should be up to I think six. They probably just win it and then sit out a year. Yeah. And then win it. Uh, they got something going on. <laughs> All right. We will see you Thursday night for another edition of PFR on Lakeshore Public Television. Uh, Good job by our camera people. Again, it's this is about the third week rain yes, for our camera people that's right. with the rain gear, but uh, they fought off the rain tonight to get the job done. Good job by them. We'll see you Thursday night on PFR on Lakeshore Public Television. 
Pinnacle Hospital is a collaboration between physicians and medical practitioners providing care in a private, personal setting. Pinnacle Hospital offers both inpatient and outpatient care, including laboratory and imaging services. Pinnacle Hospital in Crown Point. Who is the dark afraid of? His name is Tim. When you report a power outage, Tim and linemen like him respond to the call. Text OUT to 444-111 to report an outage. With your cell phone, when the power is out, power is still in your hands. A Flex Equity line from Tech Credit Union gives you convenient access to cash whenever you need it. This home equity loan features a low introductory rate and no closing costs. Tech Credit Union is an equal housing lender and is federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Learn more at techcu.org or call Tech Credit Union at 800-276-TECH. Programming on Lakeshore Public Television is provided by Strack and Van Til Food Market. Custom decorated cakes, breads, and baked goods right from the oven. Domestic meats and artisan cheeses in every store. Seven days a week, fresh is more than just a word. Strack and Van Til, built around you. Captioning for PFR and PFR Scoreboard is provided by Voice to Print Captioning, LLC. Wardrobe for PFR and PFR Scoreboard provided by Gosser Corporate Sales Incorporated. Custom embroidery, screen, and digital printing. Further support provided by Fahrenheit 212 Restaurant and Bar. 